You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. Hey, Derek. You're great. Are we going to have nicknames for each other each episode? You're great. We should. You're great. Uh, I'm under boob. That's the original. That's the OG. So you're Nev so Nips. Great. I'm under boob. That's oh, wait. Really let's good. not give away the studio production value we have here. It's pretty, pretty low. We're <laughs> probably going to sing anyway, so we might as well just use it. That's a good point. I'm... And then it wasn't silent. You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. <laughs> You're, great. You're great. You're great. For some reason, when I tried to make a three with my hand, it felt really weird. No, I don't know. And it looked like, well, I couldn't see all your fingers either. So it just looked like you forgot how to count. <laughs> like you were like, what comes next? <laughs> oh, it feels yeah. weird. Uh, anyways, uh, welcome to the Hug Life podcast. I am Mike One Hand Coletta. And I am Monica Peg Leg Nevy. <laughs> <laughs> remember that time like, you were a you, pirate i remember you could you were only pirate. count on one hand for some reason is what i was thinking but you know what it just it rarely goes the way that i well when you use your peg intend. leg you can only count to one everyone knows that that is true and you mm. don't have any toes to use no nope, it's upsetting it's very upsetting yes, let's, let's get a moment of silence for all the pirates out there thank you pirates thank you pirates <laughs> All I'm right. Really bringing those back. All yeah, right. Yeah. So things you could do to help this podcast. You ready? Number one, rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen. You can follow us on Spotify. And now we are yeah. on Amazon Music and Audible because for some reason they didn't let us on there before, but now we're in it. We're in it to win it with yeah. them. Um, also, you can go to patreon.com slash hug life podcast, donate one dollar a month, and you get an extra special bonus episode, which Monica and I are gonna record probably this week. Yeah, yes we, are. yes, we are. Yeah. yeah, so that will come out this week. And then if you also, if you're subscribing to us now, you have access to that entire back catalog, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of bonus episodes there to listen to. There's probably yeah. like a year or two's worth of bonus episodes to listen to there. So now many boner there. episodes. So many boners. Okay. <laughs> Other things you could do is you can go to monicanevy.com, huglifepodcast.com, click on the Amazon banner shop as you normally would, and that gives a little something, something. You can also go to colettacomedy.com now and do it too, because I have that set up. Um, Hell yeah. I've actually been doing a lot of stuff to the, the websites to make them uh, work better. And it, and it works. It's pretty neat that it actually works. I get you about it. knowing what you're doing. Yeah, it's fun. So I've been messing with like word. I'm actually been messing with WordPress to try to like make it so we have cool stuff. I could probably mess with the Hug Life one even more and add like a contact info thing too that would go straight to our email. Isn't that neat? Ooh, that I should do that. Cool. That would be neat. Um, anyway, but <laughs> other things you can do is you could go to our Instagram, Monica to no one's surprise runs our Instagram because I'm horrible at social media. It's at yeah. Hug Life Podcast and it's a lot of cute animals, a lot of cute animals. And then people we've had on the podcast before we want to support people like Christina Walkinshaw, one of my favorite people in the entire world. Sure, uh, yeah. yeah uh, Gabriel Rutledge, Gabby, you know, one of the OGs of the podcast. Um, anyone else you want to shout out real quick? Oh. Putting you on the spot here. Uh Steve Gillespie. I, I love I love Steve Gillespie. I mean, we've only had good guests, Preacher Lawson, uh Jenny Zagrino. It's a good one. Jenny Zagrino says I have a learning disability. Yeah, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Monica loved that part. That was That's one how of her we diagnosed parts. Mike with his learning disability. That's one of her favorite parts of the podcast. Okay. <laughs> yeah, my favorite episodes are when people are mean to Mike. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Hey, uh, now's the time that we plug the shows. Look at my hands yes, coming out. Sure. Of it's actually kind of fun doing this because it looks like they're coming out of nowhere. Oh, we're it having is, a good time. Yeah. What if I did it that? It could not be your hands. It could be someone else going. That's what I want to do. One time I'm going to do a countdown and I'm going to have Katie on the side and her hand will come in from the side. And Ooh, do two. <laughs> that really mess with me. Yeah. Um, oh, shows got coming up this weekend. I am at the Ballard Comedy Club in Seattle. It is the their grand opening and I'm featuring and you should come support it. Okay. And then on the third, which is Friday, it is the Seattle super secret stand-up show. I will be there. It's going to be great. It's the midnight show that we run as a team, as a group. And um, it's been really good lately. So come on out, bring your mask. It's going to be fine. Just come. It's got a very high ceiling. If that makes you feel better. <laughs> it's, very, it's been, it's been pure fire lately. Yes. Um, so also, Wait, oh, you got, you got more. Oh, Sorry. yeah. Okay. Just because we've been only doing two. So I want to make sure people know I just updated my website and put a photo of my September shows up. So you should, you can find those at Monica Nevy, but I'll be in 
uh, Moore Park, California, Hollywood, California, Los Angeles, California, and Bakersfield, California, the 9th through 12th. All those uh all that info is on my website the 10th is a show that we're i'm putting on with some people who've been on this podcast brie pruitt is going to be on there um so which is kind of the more important one so if you're in the la area get tickets to that one at the third wheel comedy venue in hollywood california it's going to be great hollywood we got seattle bellingham quincy moscow idaho cottage grove oregon tacoma you know, lots of stuff. Just uh, that West Coast, just that West Coast. That West Coast swagger. Mm-hmm. Monica uh, Well, I will not be at the secret show this Friday because I am going right. to Arizona this mm-hmm. weekend. I'm going to be at the Copper Blues Club. It's called Copper Blues Live is the name of the club. It's a mm-hmm. rock club. I'm opening for Kelsey Cook, former guest of the podcast. So I will be there this weekend. Hell yeah. It's Saturday and Sunday, two shows each night. And then I fly back Monday. I fly back and I go straight to a barbecue. Isn't that exciting? I love barbecue. It is exciting because two times this month I fly back on Sunday and then have a show on Monday like an idiot. Dude, yeah, you got to not do that. That's the bad news bears. Well, I need the money. That's the other thing. Things are getting canceled again a little bit. So, you know, if you feel like maybe we'll go back to supporting people digitally, please do. I'm nervous. I'm legitimately nervous. I think because I'm going to go back to school. Like this is like my last hurrah this weekend before like November is when I go out again because I'm going to go back to work. And I think that I don't think the school is going to be open very long, honestly. Oh, yeah, I forgot you go like you work at a school. I work at a school. So I'm like, kind I'm of hoping nervous. it'll be fine. But yeah, we'll yeah, see. we'll see. It's just the problem is kids are germ filled disease rodents. So well, yeah, and then them not being vaccinated and stuff doesn't, doesn't help, help but... at all. Yeah, it doesn't help at all. Well, yeah, I guess you work in high school. So hopefully a lot of them are but not for the little ones. Well, it's funny because you're not allowed to you're not allowed to ask, you know, that's like a HIPAA violation. But it's well, funny because right. the kids will tell you they get really excited when they get vaccinated. I let yeah. you know. I well, Lyndon told us our son told us last night uh that not getting the vaccine is his worst enemy that's, that's like, good that's smart that's a smart kid right he gets there. very upset that he's the only one that's not vaccinated so well you also call him an unvaccinated swine right as you walk around the house I do, I said, shut your mouth shut your mouth you anti-vaxxer yeah. <laughs> monica's just calling her uh, our eight-year-old is an anti-vaxxer he's a total anti-vaxxer he's like no i just don't get the vaccine nope yeah. you're an anti-vaxxer shut up karen you start calling your, your kid karen back on. Yeah. oh it's great good uh, times silly. anyways <laughs> so cross your fingers but yes um if things maybe don't pan out the way that we want uh there'll still be options to support people digitally including our patreon um so keep keep your eyes out for those things keep your eyes peeled monica it's lexical embrace time we haven't had an episode in like three weeks i know and so i have quite a few and by that i mean three (laughs) (laughs) that's pretty good i have two two okay the first two could be one. I'm going to combine them because they're both food ones. Okay. okay. One, good. smoked cheese. Smoked cheese. Nice. Okay. Very mm. good stuff. Very okay. good stuff. Number I like two, I tried lemon pepper wing sauce from w- Bubbalo bu- 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 Dial Use. Wow. <laughs> Buffalo <Jesus>. Wild Wings. <laughs> Buffalo Dial Use. Bu- <laughs> That's like, I was not like, even I'm close. Gonna, I was just going to commit to it because I'm losing my mind. Bubble. Buffalo. Bubble dial use is what I'm gonna call this podcast. Bubble. <laughs> I gotta figure out how to spell that. Right. O's dial you. <laughs> That's what I said. Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> okay, you guys know what he meant. And it was um, really, really good. I had which what? Okay, so you got the wet. I got the pepper. the sauce. I didn't get the rub. That's so funny because I actually got it the other day too, like last week, mm. and I did not like it. Well, I got it because they ran out of the two sauces at um, the Medford Buffalo Wild Wings. Okay, actually, you know what? We're going to not do a lexical embrace. I'm going to tell you a stupid thing that happened in Medford. Can I tell you a stupid thing that happened in Medford? Of course. We just let's do it. Andrew Slater is headlining in Chadwick's with wonderful, wonderful comedian, great friend, fun to hang out with. Actually, a really great solid weekend when I thought it wouldn't be one because I was like, oh, no, Medford. Right. And then we go to Buffalo Wild Wings. We ask to sit on the patio. They say yes. 
And then they do take back seats and say, uh. you have to sit inside because of the forest fire smoke. And I'm like, so I can't sit outside because of a pandemic. So I have to sit oh, you inside. Don't, you don't want to sit inside because of the pandemic, but you can't sit outside because of the fire. Yeah. yeah. So they're <laughs> choosing pandemic over forest fire smoke. And I'm just like, and no one's wearing masks inside. And we're both just like, this fucking sucks. So we actually didn't, we got to go after the second show. So we just go in, get our shit and leave. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was so silly. They like, let people, if you're going to like, if you're like my Chadwick's body, my not choice. not doing wings anymore. They do wings, but they're ready for it. Bad. They're bad. Oh, no, they I had so them and they before. were overdone. They were way overdone. Like the kind of like you can't eat them because they're so dry inside. Uh, that sucks. I've yeah. had their wings a lot before. Yeah. I mean, maybe I got a bad batch. You never well, know. they got noobs, you know, since they've been back. So that is true. They got people that don't know how to cook the wings because they got yes. new people. So all right. Um, that was the first half of my lexical embrace segment. So do you want to jump okay. in now and I'll jump in after anything? Yes. Oh, now I got to remember. Okay. Number one, things going better than you expected. Oh, okay. I like this. I like this. Okay. So not, not that you should be pessimistic running into things, but maybe you're a little nervous and stuff. Uh, I think things going, you're being positive and then things go better than you expect. So that's, I met my in-laws for the first time this last week and it just, uh, Aaron was very nervous about it, but it went really well. So that's good. And then is it because her in law and her in laws just hate stand up comedy? <laughs> That'll no, be why I'm, they're, they're from, just like they're just like I fucking hate stand up comedy. Well, they, anyways, there's a lot of history to it, but also oh, I guess we don't need to get into it. I just a more was... conservative place than we are. That's all. Um, we're both ladies, if you didn't know. Um, <laughs> I almost said where they were from and I'm like, I probably shouldn't do that. I know. I was, yeah. Anyways. Uh, but where are yeah, they from? We're... The heartland. The heartland. <laughs> that could be any, that could be anywhere south of Washington. So that's true, I guess. Like anywhere um, south of Washington. They're from Medford. They're not <laughs> my family. Um, you have great cousins in Medford. I didn't, I, do. I should have, I should have told them I was in town. We I have like weird out with them. schedules too. It's hard because, oh man. Tickets. Anyways. You got to do your Lexical embrace and I got nothing to tell you about Medford. Yes. Okay. Uh, a homemade taco bar. What? Yeah. Well, so we had our little. Engagement. That's what went better than you expected. Not meeting the parents. Part. The homemade the taco food. bar. <laughs> no, I mean we were together for a whole week and it went well. But no, we had so we had a little engagement party that my aunt threw us, which was very nice. Very nice. She put a lot of effort into it. And then our surprise from my uncle was that, which is hilarious. And I'm going to be honest about this. He was very excited because he works with a lot of Mexican dudes. And so he hired one of the guys that works in his warehouse because he works for a food company that delivers food um, to come over with his family. And just like they brought a huge watermelon and then he did carne asada and chicken and like everything. And he cooked it there and it was like really good, um, which is so <laughs> thing to be like, here, I'll just pick one of the Mexican dudes to do a taco bar. I'm sure it'll be great. But I think he cooks too. But it was it was really, really good. And um I think like even if you do it at home, like a taco bar where you just go down the line. I like that. People used to get upset when I worked for the Boys and Girls Club because every time we had um, like a big event, they would get a taco bar. But I like a taco bar. No, I like a taco bar, too. Who doesn't mm -hmm. like a taco bar? I don't know. Well, you're saying, what I'm saying in this podcast is if you don't like a taco bar, the official stance of Hug Life podcast is go fuck yourself. Like, I genuinely don't know who would be like, no, people who hate. I don't know who hates Mexican food, though. There's something to find, you know, I, I mean? used to hate Mexican food when I was a small child, because as a small child, I was an idiot. But like what? There's always something to you can find no matter what kind of food you like, you know, like if you don't yeah. like a taco or a burrito, there's salads, there's other stuff, there's just meat and vegetables like who, what, you know? Anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. It's 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 silliness. Um. Okay. Anyways, taco bar. Hell yeah. All right. You ready for the rest part of it? Yes. What's okay. the last one? There's two. Medford finding things about towns you've been to that you had no idea they were there. Okay. Nice. If you walk from Chadwick's the Rogue Regency, mm -hmm. two miles. We went. We went for a long walk. Uh, Slater and I. Which way there, did you go? We went south. 
down Biddle Road. We stayed on Biddle Road, the place. Oh, okay. Got it. And you like you go under the overpass, you keep walking past all those fast food restaurants. Yes, yes, yes. There is a nice park and a local coffee shop inside an old service station that has amazing cold brew. And like, and I was like sitting there and I was like, I've been to this, I've done this club, this club in quotes, like six times. And I've always just been like, uh, fucking Medford. And I didn't know this existed that whole time. Yeah, it was very nice. cash and carry or something over there with my cousins um and we i just I was like oh i didn't know there was some stuff over here yeah. there is weird pockets in medford of like things like strip mall type of situations but you have to like go to the next part so that's beautiful you find it yeah i found it it was nice slater knew is what i'm saying <laughs> and then the last thing I, I was in alaska for a week and a half and it was good oh yeah alaska mm, the great right to alaska the last frontier the great north the great white north right the white north because it's I snowy know. i think that's what they say i'm Was not there entirely any sure snow no nope. no nope. did, st- did you did you go off at midnight or something fun no but we did like uh it was like kind of the tail end of that so really it was like 10 30 is when the sun went down no. so it wasn't really like super like well i guess like 11 ish but it wasn't like that that's, we're also like yeah, older now like- we're all just like i just want to go to bed <laughs> Do you enjoy being with your family? Yeah, Katie got to hang out with all of the children, and it was uh, pure chaos. You know? Nice. Yeah. Was it better than you hanging out with all the children? <laughs> um, I mean, so we're we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. This is kind of like rolling yeah, sorry, into the positive we're segue spin. into the positive spin. But we should, should we do the next segment then before that? Yes, yes, yes. Hey guys, good news. Hi, welcome to the good news. Like with me, Michael Atta. Talking about bubble o dial you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the first story is government to ban the UK government is to ban single use plastic cutlery. Okay. So people talk about this all the time. Like plastic cutlery is really just terrible. Like it's just bad for the environment in general. Yeah. Because it just doesn't go away. I think about how lazy we are like all day. Oh, yeah. Like it's, it's just so silly how much stuff is just based on convenience. Anyways, business. yeah. So they're gonna they're gonna put a, a ban in place, um, on eighteen single use. Oh wait, no, that's the average figures of people. So it's all plastic cutlery, and I think it also even includes like plastic plates too. Like pretty much mm. anything you use plastic to eat with, they're like, let's just get rid of it. And I think nice. that's really great. Um, <laughs> and then I was watching this video that's unrelated to this article. This is on BBC news toot or something um it was it was toot the article yeah <laughs> no it, it was a video oh uh, <laughs> it was toot. um and they were talking about how what's funny is you want to like do stuff to like make it so that plastic doesn't go in the ocean when in reality in america like we have pretty good waste management and most of the plastic we use is in a landfill not better not, yeah, but just when not people are ocean, like protect yeah. the turtles in reality it's like we're not the reason the turtle it's like 50 percent of its commercial fishing which because yeah. that's just awful and then it's like the rest of it is like international policies that are not in place for other countries where they just throw shit in the ocean all the time can i ask you a random and i don't know if you'll know this mm-hmm. i love seafood born of the sea and uh i feel bad about it a lot because i know consuming a lot of seafood is promoting kind of the us being in the oceans and commercial fishing and stuff what would be the best sustainable way to enjoy seafood is they it have like farm raised they have like, like farm raised stuff and you get okay. like it's in the same way as like grass-fed beef that's like free range organic i'm pretty sure that there's the same thing with fish too where it's like you pay the extra money to know that it's not like in coming Dumping from a like bunch a, of plastic in the ocean yeah there's a um there's like a thing where people mislabel fish intentionally too. That's one that's weird about seafood is like, people mm-hmm. will be like, this is a hundred percent halibut. And it turns out it's like cod. They just labeled it differently, but it's so similar that people don't know. And Those like, two. Oh. I don't, yeah. Can't really tell the difference. So, I just know that I don't really like either one. Yeah. They do that, which I find kind of scary and weird. Um, but I haven't watched that sea spiracy documentary yet. Cause I don't want to get really sad. So mm, I want to watch it. The Sea Spiracy one, it's on Netflix. Yeah, Sea Spiracy. I'm on. Yeah, it's all entirely about commercial fishing and how it's well, really. Listen to up. our Patreon episode. I'm sure it'll be a lot about that. The TLDR is how our world has been screwed up since the early 1800s because of commercial fishing. Right. Like, which I so, but this is, uh, yes, it's an upsetting thing. I feel a bit powerless sometimes. Not to take away your your wonderful segment here, 
as far as like making individual decisions or household decisions, I don't feel like I have as much of an impact as if these dinguses did things differently. And so, oh yeah, it's a policy problem. Affect too. that part, you know. They always uh, say you should eat less beef if you care about the environment. But in my right. mind, I'm like, how is that doing anything? It's still going to be at the store. It's right, they're still, still making it. Yeah, exactly. They're still it's, making it. It needs to be. Why policy can't we decisions. start with them? Yeah, exactly, and not. Same thing with recycling, because like recycling for the longest time, all of the like plastic companies have put it on the consumer to recycle, not Mm -hmm. themselves. And it's like, oh, that's pretty shitty. Yeah, there's now finally there's some brands that are like, this is compostable or whatever. I didn't realize when I was in Alaska, I learned this fact that in the 1800s to like the mid 1900s, when the whaling was like really crazy, like really heavy, Mm -hmm. they killed 90 percent of the world's whales. Yeah, they're fucking idiots. Like, I yeah, don't there's like 10 percent of the world's whales left right now, which well, is crazy. Well, and then crazy. they ruin it. I was telling Aaron about it the other day because it, it it's just that the macaw tribe here is allowed to hunt one whale a year, um, and they used to like show it on the news whenever they did that because it's pr- pretty cool because it's a traditional way they use like a canoe and a spear like to get a whole whale. It's pretty intense, but they use the whole thing. You know, it's not. But they've had to make that rule for them because of what they did before because they killed so many whales you know what i mean but it wasn't them killing them it was the big it like, was like people in norway <laughs> well yeah and, the, and like yeah, the so uk now, and like europe and yes america if you hadn't murdered at 90 percent of the whales then you could continue to uh traditionally feed your tribe by uh killing a, a normal amount of whales anyways it's just what we're it's, trying to say is Monica wants annoying. to kill a normal amount of whales. I'm a whale hunter. Uh, it, <laughs> but I just want to see them, though. I don't want to kill them. Um, it's just frustrating to me that it's like I try to make changes a lot to help, but I don't feel like it's making a difference. And then it's like, why should I have to do this if I'm not really the problem? It's the way that they're. Yeah. It's the greedy, oversized businesses that are. It's anyways. a po- it's a policy problem. <sighs> All right. So, well, the next thing. Well, that's good is because um, when a corporation or a government makes the decision like banning single use plastics, that's what actually helps. So this is a good story. I'm sorry I got distracted. <laughs> it's OK. You know, you could go catch your own salmon if you wanted to. There's the pink salmon are right now coming up through. They're, they're in the waterway in Tacoma. I was there yesterday. Ooh, I, like there's, I could send you a picture. There was a giant school and it was really weird. They're never that far up in the waterway. Oh, grab and, a couple. Just just go down there and just grab like a bear with a mouth. Har. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This next thing, you can make a difference, Monica. I know you can. Oh, if you go to Glasgow, because the nightclub in Glasgow will harness energy from dancers. That's right. They're going to use people's body heat and fluids to capture the incredible amounts of body. Well, they're using heat pumps and fluids to capture the incredible amount of body heat generated by SWG3's crowd. SWG3 is Climate Conference. Oh. So they're going to channel the combined energy of all these people dancing into 12, 150 meter deep boreholes drilled beneath the venue. And then the body heat that's harnessed can then be converted into energy to keep the lights on and the music playing all night long. They're using their dancing to keep the party going. That's amazing. That's beautiful. That's a, I wish you didn't say fluids, but otherwise. Well, you know, it says body heat. The name of it's called body heat is the system. And it body uses heat great. pumps and fluids is what I it says. Like fluids, but yeah, all these fluids everywhere. Like collecting. Oh, my shit. goodness. Look at all these moist fluids everywhere. Ew. Ew. Um, Monica kills whales. Ew. No, I don't. I just hunt them. <laughs> I just hunt them um, to look at them. I hunt them with my picture. eyes. I've been trying to find the orcas that are in over here in the sound well there's two po- there's two types of pods there's residential pods that live and eat salmon and those ones are around a lot and then there's a transient pods that eat seals and i've seen right. i've only seen the transient pods on the dive boats interesting i have been looking in the tacoma area and then my best friend has seen them twice uh in port orchard right in front of her house fucking bitch in Ort orchard Mm-hmm. Uh, awesome. Okay, those were great stories. I think that's that's uh, well. I think we learned a lot too. Thank you. And we're all ready to make different day. Hey guys, that was good news. <laughs> Are you ready to fluids? Positive spin. I'm ready to positive, positive spin. spin. Fluids. Positive spin. Body fluids. Let's get into we it. We should Just do one that's like 
positive spin words that you hate that make you go Ugh. oh that'll be a really good one yeah that'd be fun um okay you know what mine is currently Not bubble most. o dial you bubble o dial you is the word <laughs> i hate the most because i makes you, shiv- makes you shiver you fucked it up um okay we are gonna positive spin uh what was it <laughs> it was to trying, to, 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 do trying to tell people to, to do something you don't want to do for Try example to convince Okay. Yes. And it's because of children. Like I was up in Alaska and these crazy kids, one, I had to babysit one of the kids. And so the kid told me he likes Minecraft. So I booted up my laptop because I have Minecraft on my laptop. Right. He's three. I played it. He told me what he wanted to do. Right. Because okay. that's because if I can't, I could, I couldn't, because watching him use a mouse made Yo, me want to throw my computer it. across. The I room. hate letting our son use my laptop. So I don't do it anymore. Yeah. Also, yeah. One of the speakers is broken now. I don't know how he did that, but it is. <laughs> yeah, it's see, they get their grubby hands on everything. Okay. Mm-hmm. But then after that, he told his brother, who's nine, and then it was my Uncle Mike, can we play Minecraft? Uncle Mike, can we play Minecraft? Uncle Mike, can we play Minecraft? Uh, For like dude. four days. And I was like, no, no, no. And then I also had to end up like playing catch with him instead in the backyard, which was fine because at least we're outdoors. But like, Oh my gosh. And also like my sister watching my sister try to get him to go to sleep. I was like, Oh my goodness. Oh yeah. It is so interesting that biologically they are actually really good at sleeping and they get grumpy when they're hungry and stuff. But then you want to, when you try and do that thing, either feed them or have them go to sleep. They're like, "Mm -mm." they're like the most difficult people to (laughs) convince watching him try to drink water is like, Oh my God. He drinks juice in two seconds, but you give him water and he's like, this is the grossest thing in the world. And I'm like, and then I have to start explaining uh, why water is good for you and all that stuff just to get him to do it. It's like, oh, my God, you should be you like, oh, you know what? Well, if you don't drink water, you're not hydrated. If you're not hydrated, you know what you can't do? Play Nintendo Switch. <laughs> exactly. Which you're is... super dehydrated. You can't play Nintendo Switch. Everyone knows <laughs> was... that joking which i mean taking the minecraft away from your nephews is probably useful as well but i oh, for his birthday was very recently and he got a lot of stuff and my joke was just like good now we have more stuff to take away <laughs> 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 you run out of stuff eventually but yes the uh it's uh, i don't know it could, they just want to do what they want to do i feel like and there's it's also no, hard because you know it's better for them and i was yeah. a kid once and i feel like i actually I I feel like I listened to my mom. Now, was I afraid of her? Of course I was. But right. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm I listened to her, which, mom. yeah, I still am. Everyone's <laughs> afraid of my mom. Jackie's terrifying. But like, I, I, I don't know like how this kid just, like one of the kids, it was like 11 o'clock at night and they'd been trying to get him to go to sleep for three fucking hours. And he was wailing. And I'm just like, what, what do you do? Like, what, what do you do in this situation? Yeah. I mean, and so I want to positive spin guess, that. Geez. Like, what do okay. you do? <laughs> what do you, okay. The positive why is spin it good of someone he's... not doing what you want them to do is that, I don't even know. You get to, uh, well, you know what? It's a you test find... for yourself. You know, I feel you can... like being sticking to what you said. You can find out if the kid has a good singing voice because he'll be wailing for like three hours. So be like, well, you know what? He might have a future in music, maybe in opera. That's good. You can see the vocals. We went to a baseball game last night and it was like kids night. Was it Tacoma Ranier's? Yes. And it does because Aaron's credit union put it on. Um, Monica just flashed her credit union logo. If you want anyone wanted to know, like it was a really cool thing. I feel like I shouldn't say what it is. I don't know why, but um Anyways, there are so many other kids there, and it does make you go, oh, we don't have it that bad at all. Like how oh, often, yeah. how often some parents correct their kids, like like how many times I'm like, dude, leave or take it away or whatever. You know, they like say the same thing over. I'm like, do you realize you said it eight times? Oh, yeah. There's a thing with no punishment. Like they'll say they're gonna punish the kid and they don't do it. And you're yes. like, you should just take that shit away because it's driving me crazy and but I am a third party on the outside. Yes. And that's why you get in this situation where you're trying to convince them to do something else and they won't do it for a really long time because before you have let them eventually get away with stuff or taken a really long time to actually say something. He we 
literally our new motto is how many times do people have to ask you to do or not do something? And he goes once, which is good. And it's also a consent thing, but it's, uh, it's working. It's <laughs> but more working importantly, out. he's doing his chores. <laughs> right. Yes. But more importantly, we just, I, I think we'll stick with that though, because I think that's a good, just it, anywhere. And so now when he, you know, it's two or three times that he's starting to argue, then we go, how many times do you have to ask you? What? Uh, <laughs> which really is what they impression. sound like. It's a really yeah. good impression. I'm just beating yeah. down child being like, once yeah it's i don't i think the more you have to do that try to convince somebody to do something you especially with kids because you're right it usually is something that they actually need (laughs) yeah it's like go to bed yeah you learn not to back down eventually you know what i mean like you you have to or else they're going to keep walking on you so it would prepare you for maybe in in your job or something trying to convince somebody you would not back down as easily Huh? Yeah, that's good. Like okay. Hold your convictions because <laughs> you practiced on this idiot child who won't yeah, fall asleep. Exactly. Yeah, no, that's so good. Stupid. Right. You're like, I can. That's do actually this probably the best one we could have thought of because honestly, it's really <laughs> this is really fucking hard. I was ha- it was it to the point I was having like daydreams of being bad cop Uncle Mike and being like, shut the fuck up and go to bed. <laughs> like, right. I was getting well, angry. Is, Restaurants. That is a thing. And I think oh you do that God. in in pairs whenever, you know, I mean, I know there's good cop, bad cop type of situation, but I give him a couple of chances. I don't say anything if, if Aaron is the one dealing with it. And then if he's not listening to her, then I step in or the other way around, you know, you step dad right in there. Yep. Oh, sorry. I don't know what that was. I Um, didn't hear anything. (laughs) Oh, good. Never mind. (laughs) Did you just fart? Yes. I know. I knew what that was. Um, It's a whale whale call. It's a whale. (laughs) They're here. They're here. They're here. What, they're if the your front farts, door. what if your farts sounded like whale song? Oh That'd my God. Hilarious. Oh, I did an experiment last week because I mm-hmm. went through my notes. This is off topic, but you know, follow me on social media. Um, where <clears throat> I had written down, would it be funny? Would like would fart sound be funny if it was any other sound, like the sound itself? So I was like, like, what if it was a cat meow? Is what I had written down in my notes. So I edited some cat, 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 meow, cat, buffalo double wings. What is Buff- it? Buffalo uh, dial you. <laughs> buffalo dial you. Um, edited uh, some cat meow videos to have their meows be farts. And it is pretty funny. But then everybody <laughs> was like, well, what if fart sounds, sound is like meow, which is good. So that's the next one. So don't worry. Uh, maybe we'll do whales after that. <laughs> Nice. But that was, I feel like whales can sound like farts sometimes. They can. They get that deep bassy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's make like clicking down. noises, TikTok. which is what's weird. Yeah. Like, yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, so the TLDR of this positive spin is I still don't want to have children. I ever will. So, right. But I think you're right. Cause you do, but you do have to do that at work sometimes, or especially if you're a supervisor or a boss of some sort. Oh, yeah. To convince your employees to do stuff that they don't want to do. Um, like, no, you have to right. have to and, do this. Or come on. Your friends, I don't know. Especially drunk friends when you're like, Oh my god, come gosh. on, drink water, go to bed, stop. That was like 80% of fight college. That person. <laughs> yeah, so it's prepared you for now dealing with children, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I forget about like also like working in the high school and trying to convince kids, like, no, you need to do the schoolwork. And like, yeah, why it's stupid. And I'm like, well, you need to graduate. So yeah, I think it gives you leave the school debating abilities of looking further down like they everyone always needs a reason why like with with uh going to bed with um our son it is a lot of well tomorrow we need to do this and you need to have energy for it he gets really grumpy when he hasn't slept and he knows that so then we go well we, we're we gonna do this special thing tomorrow or you have to go to school tomorrow you know don't you want to you don't want to be mean to your friends you know and he's like oh yeah so it is like that you can kind of look down the line and try to convince them of especially when they're young they're very stupid um <laughs> freaking idiot i think yeah. you close the door to his room and you're like idiot <laughs> got him would have got him what just what a stupid idiot <laughs> he's in there sleeping now dumb what a fucking dummy <laughs> You just look at Aaron. what is he a fucking idiot she's like okay <laughs> i will say that in general she is meaner to not to him, but about him, which I think is really funny. 
I think once you've spent, and it's your child, you know, she birthed him so she can do whatever she wants. Uh, no, he was at, I don't, I've started doing this on stage a little bit, but I'm going to share it anyways. We were at baseball practice and he was like, just screaming, like oh. just screaming and running around and all the other kids are like, what the fuck, you know? And he had come home earlier that week and was like, nobody wanted to play with me today. <laughs> nobody wanted to play with me. All the kids w wouldn't play with me. You know, we're like, Oh, that's, you know, find nice ones and hang out with them. And then he's screaming at baseball practice. And she goes, I mean, I know why they don't want to play with them. <laughs> it made me laugh so hard. He's screaming like, like a weirdo. Yeah. It's like you're bossy and you're loud. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, but she says those things. I, I don't say those things. She says, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I think it's just, even if you're forced to be trying to convince somebody, it prepares you for the real it's world. It's going to prepare you some, the real some world. Uh, negotiating skills. Because raising a kid is not the real world. No, it is no, fake. It's not. It's fake. It's <laughs> fictional. All right. You want to do this quiz? Yeah, let's do this quiz. This quiz is great. It is plan the perfect day in New York City and we'll reveal which animal matches your vibe. A lot yes. of vibes matching on BuzzFeed. Yeah, a lot of vibes lately. All right, pick a New York City breakfast to start your day. Bagel oh, and lox, easy. bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll, a chocolate protein shake, or a donut. Um, a bagel and lox. Duh. And I'm going to go bacon, egg, and cheese on a roll. Boom. Nice. Uh, pick a morning activity, walking in Central Park, visiting the Met Museum, visiting Coney Island, or <laughs> visiting the Bronx Zoo. A lot of visiting. It's like, going I'm going to go to <laughs> Coney Island. No, I'm going to go I'm gonna go to the museum in the morning. <sighs> a little mu morning museum? I'm going to go with, I'm going to go to Central Park. All right. I'm, I'm going to go to the Bronx Zoo. I've never been okay, there before, but I watched nice. a, I watched a that's something you Nat go Geo show Not that about it. Oh, nice. Pick a midday snack, an iced oat milk latte, dumplings, empanadas, or a pretzel. I know what I want. Okay. you. What do you dumplings? Want? Okay. Those do look really good. I'm going to go with the empanadas. Ooh, that's good. That was my second choice. Good. Pick an afternoon activity. Seeing a comedy show. Who sees a comedy show in the afternoon like a psycho? Right. Watching a Broadway show, bar hopping, or ice skating. Oh, this is kind of tough. Obviously, not seeing a comedy show, but like I'm gonna go to the matinee. I'm gonna go. I mean, this might be the only time. I've never been to a Broadway show. I really want to go. Okay. The only things I've ever done are bar hopping. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the Broadway show. That seems good. I'm going to go ice skating because I, 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 I like ice skating, but I never go. Mm. Sounds fun. Pick a dinner, sushi at Nobu, pizza in Little Italy, pita wrap from Halal Guys, or noodles in Flushing. <laughs> flushing. <laughs> what you're going to have to do after you eat Eat it. those noodles. Yeah, you got to go flushing. <laughs> um, I mean, the only problem I'm having with the sushi is that Nobu's expensive. Um, I'm gonna. I go, mean, this I, is your fantasy day in New York. Right, Money so is no I would objects. Probably splurge a bit, anyways. I'll I'll go with sushi at Nobu. It's weird. Every part of my heart tells me to go get pizza. Yeah, but those noodles look good. The noodles do. I mean, the halal is great as well. I don't oh, know. Man, I'm gonna go You're with pizza. Gonna get I'm gonna good go with food. pizza. Yeah, this is really yeah. good food. Finally, pick a sweet treat to end the day: Levain cookies, a taiyaki, magnolia bakery, banana pudding, or milk bar ice cream. The Levain cookies I have had and are amazing, and I am picking that. Well, I've watched a lot of milk bar stuff, but um, I, I'm going to go with the banana pudding, actually. That looks mm, really good. Nice. Oh, this is finally, you liar. Yeah, finally pick a way to end the night. Sipping espresso martinis at a local bar, dancing oh. the night away at Lavo, strolling across the Brooklyn Bridge, or getting a massage in Chinatown. That sounds like a massage true. is a nighttime activity. Yeah, yeah that sounds like you're getting comedy off shows for in sure. the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, this is you get the massage so, in the afternoon. Would you rather stay awake and be drunk or get jerked off? Those mm, options. I mean, <laughs> that's a real tough choice. <laughs> um, I mean, we're, I'm gonna have to go pretty soon because I'm getting a massage today, but not for getting jerked off. I didn't do that myself. Anyways, everyone um, can do that themselves. I know. You said it. I'm like, gonna do. I could do it. Strolling across the Brooklyn Bridge. Uh, Ooh. You Sorry. know what? I've never had an espresso martini. I'm gonna do that one. Okay, I could see you like. Oh my gosh, I'm really excited about what I got. What ammo did you get? Oh my God. Monica's just blown away right now. Sorry, sorry. Somebody just texted me some hot goss. Oh, okay, uh, what did you get? I got dog. Ooh, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> it says you're fun, lovable, and adventurous. You tend to make new friends everywhere you go. I would say that's that's acceptable. I got cat. You're intelligent, independent, and curious. Though you can be a bit shy, you feel com- totally comfortable when you're around the people you love. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. And you are, yeah, look at that. I you am like kind cats. of shy around people I don't know. That is true. I would agree with that. I need to be more open, you know, get, just be give, more people mas- like. give people massages in Chinatown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what that they say about people who are shy is that they should jerk off strangers more. <laughs> <laughs> all right monica uh, what's the charity fuck. today <laughs> perfect um as you know there is a, a hurricane in the southern gulf coast area and so i picked a charity because this can be uh whenever there's a, a currently happening disaster it gets a little muddled with charities sometimes i think and so i picked one that first of all has a hundred out of a hundred on charity navigator which is really exciting but different than the UNICEF and ones you might not, uh, you might be a little nervous about. So it's called Feeding the Gulf Coast. It's feedingthegulfcoast.org. And they help with displaced people and making sure people have food and, um, uh, you know, can be stable while they're figuring out. A lot of people are evacuated right now from like New Orleans and stuff. So yes, feedingthegulfcoast.org. Nice. Well, is there anything you want to say to the listener before we go? Oh, I love you so much. <laughs>